In this video, I'm hunting down the most bizarre state fair food in the USA. What are the menu items that give people a double take? Or people are like, wait, what is that? It's peanut butter, jelly, and bacon every single time. But first, let's back up. So far, we've gone deep into the far out fair food offerings of the New York State Fair. After this, I'm going to need a defibrillator to keep my heart going. Oh my gosh. Then we drop by the Minnesota State Fair. I've had the version of this food many times in Vietnam. It costs about a dollar or two. Here, $15. What's going on? Now, just like Lewis and Clark, we're pushing even further westward to the Washington State Fair, the biggest in the Pacific Northwest and one of the largest in the world. Good morning and welcome to the Washington State Fair. Quick tip, if you want to go to a fair without any lines, go early in the morning. Also, going on a weekday doesn't hurt. Today it's Thursday, it's early morning, they just opened and we basically have the place to ourselves. Here, when you're done with the rides and the seal shows, you'll witness some of this country's most odd, unusual, unnerving food creations. State fairs are the perfect place to experiment with food, taking ingredients you'd never expect to see together, but jamming them together anyways and seeing what happens. Like crossing a corgi with a husky. It shouldn't be done, but it's fun to watch. From Fruity Pebble cheese dogs, mm, mm, mm. all the way to battered and deep fried pork belly. Check out this white pile right here. This is a respectable white pile, enough to make Pablo Escobar impressed. Today, I'm here to try it all. This could get brutal by the end of the day. And it all starts here. This place is called Kalinka Poroshki. Kalinka Poroshki started its journey in the 1970s here in Seattle, offering a traditional Ukrainian cuisine experience to folks in the USA. We've been doing mobile food operations since 1979. My grandmother, when she was running it, she had my father stand up front and eat them. Just to show off that, look what we have here. I want that job where you just stand outside your own place and eat the food continuously. I would also have to have alcohol on the menu then. Waiting in line here comes with a tasty reward, a Poroshki. It's essentially a cheeseburger tucked inside a donut. Oh, I've broken into the kitchen and this is where all the fun begins. They have a dough mixer right here behind me. As soon as the dough is done, we're gonna see how the stuffing works. I believe this may be some kind of a dough extruder portioning device. She gets this big lever, squeezes it down, and then let's see what that's done to the dough. Boom, perfect portions. She works it a little bit by hand and then it's in with the fillings. Starting with beef, a load of beef, and then a big respectable square of cheddar cheese. Close it up and that is ready for the fryer. But they don't just let it fry or float on top of the oil. They're actually gonna put it in a little oil jail. The outside feels amazing, just like crunchy, perfectly tanned fried bread. And man, there is so much meat and so much cheese on the inside. I'm a little scared that it's gonna boil my face off when I take a bite, but let's see what happens. Mmm. Oh man, that is like a thick cakey dough wrapper on the outside. The bread is so thick, I hardly even got to the meat yet, but you can see it just steaming inside there. It looks gorgeous. All right, let me get a big meat bite. Mm, the beef is super heavy and greasy. I think I found a little bit of the cheese in there too. The seasoning blend in there tastes pretty simple and straightforward. It's definitely like salt, pepper. It doesn't really have a strong flavor. It tastes just kind of like the natural beefiness, which is nice. The cheese is also nice, very creamy, delicious. Oh look, a forklift. That guy's gonna have to carry me out of here later. <laughs> the Washington State Fair welcomed its first visitors in 1900. Now, every year, more than one million attendees flock to the 160-acre fairground for a myriad of unique experiences. stroll from our Ukraine kitchen introduces me to another taste of Europe. Fleischkuschle. German? German. As a German word, it means a uh, little meat cake. Despite the tongue-twisting name, the cash cow here is much more easy to say, and they call it the beef turnover. An ice cream scoop full of seasoned minced beef and a hit of jalapeno is encased inside a flattened dough and then deep fried. We started serving here in 1963. There were three grandmas that started a booth on the outside of the fair, and they were serving them for like 17 cents. Fair prices have only gone up like 10% since then, <laughs> roughly. However, our bizarre food theme has led us to this. All right, we have come into the kitchen to see how the mac and tots are made, and it all starts with frying the tater tot. We always had people saying, you guys need to have something along with your beef turnover, you know, a hamburger and french fries and that kind of thing. So we started with the tater tots, and then we kind of had already macaroni and cheese as a kid's meal, and so we just kind of combined them one day, and then it just started flying off the shelf. Tots are done. Let's head over to the mac and cheese station. 
The love story between America and mac and cheese dates back at least three centuries. These days, the average American consumes over two pounds of mac and cheese per year. I grew up in Minnesota in a trailer house, and so for me, mac and cheese comes from a blue box, and you don't bake it and put like a crumb on top of it. What kind of mac and cheese are we dealing with here? We don't use Kraft mac and cheese. We use uh, like a Stouffer's. Oh, so you use like a Velveeta? Well, yeah. For me, that was fancy. To round off our mac and tots, shredded cheddar cheese, and bacon bits. Oh, mac and tots, $10. It is a carbohydrate bomb. It's carbs on carbs. The only protein here is a bacon. That's gonna really lighten things up. It's not. I'm gonna grab a tot. These tots are super crispy. Salty, crunchy goodness. You know, this is a good base that we're starting out with. But this dish is not just about the tater tots. Right here, we have the mac and cheese. Super creamy, soft noodles, buttery, rich. Decadent tot and mac and cheese together at last. You got crunch and you got creaminess all in one mouthful. And I got some smoky bacon in there too. How am I gonna eat like six more foods today? Oh man. As the hunt for more bizarre food offerings continues, I'm headed toward a maniacal meat maestro who's battering and frying thick chunks of pork belly. It's a dessert meat. But before that, I'm making time for some unknown southern delights. Four women in the swamp tonight. This place is known as Hattie Mae's Southern Delights. I'm looking at the menu right now. You can find fried green tomatoes, alligator kebabs, an andouille sausage corn dog. So lots of cool Southern food, but foods that have been verified. Today I'm here for one peculiar bizarre offering, and that is the biscuit battered shrimp. It sounds like breaded shrimp, but no, the construction gets wild. All right, boom, I'm in the kitchen right here with Steven. Steven is gonna be assembling our biscuit battered shrimp. First, Steve drops battered shrimpies into a fiery pool of oil. Then battered okra are fried alongside in true southern fashion. And then we fire raw off the corner. I'm going to sit that there for a few seconds while this cooks. And then as soon as these are done, I'm going to grab those two gravy on top of it. So we start with three fried shrimp inside the cone, then four pieces of fried okra. Then the remaining shrimp pieces get piled on top. Oh my gosh, country gravy going on top. This thing is wild. And that is the final product. I cannot wait to try that out. I'm gonna pick out a shrimp to begin with. You can see it's falling apart. There's some gravy on there. It's got that beautiful batter and it's still steaming too. That's good. I feel happy. Plump, juicy shrimp, delicious flavor, really crunchy on the outside. A wonderfully seasoned batter. That is awesome. All right, I'm gonna, how do I approach this? I feel happy. <laughs> So, so happy. I can't believe how good this is. You have the crunch of the waffle cone on the outside. And then I just love the way he smothered it with gravy until the gravy was going all the way to the bottom of the cone. There's so much delicious, super savory country gravy flavor in there. Mm. Even the okra tastes super fresh. It's essentially a salad in a cone because there's four fried okra. Biscuit battered shrimp. It's one of the newest inventions of this mad food scientist and stall owner, Mitch. Personally, I love Cajun Creole food. We just wanted to kind of bring something unique to the fairground. And this happens to be the only Southern themed booth on the fairground. Besides Hattie Mays, Mitch owns and runs 24 other stalls on the fairgrounds, catering to cravings you didn't even know you had, including fatty pork belly that's been transformed into a decadent dessert. Boom, I'm here with Mitch again. A shrine for fried food fanatics, Totally Fried presents an array of deep fried treats, ranging from Oreos to cheesecake. However, I'm here for their most eccentric concoction. Let's talk about the fried candied pork belly. How does that work? Breaking the barrier between meat and sweets isn't new, but it also isn't easy. For example, in central Vietnam, a dessert of roasted pork inside of tapioca balls are served with a sugary syrup. That is awesome, but it's so weird. So good, so weird. So weird. But Mitch's fried candied pork belly was born to shatter calorie records. Basically, we kind of bury it beneath brown sugar, also a little bit of rock candy syrup, and a lot of salt. And we just slow cook it for about four hours till it's nice and tender and crispy. And then we batter it, deep fry it, and then coat it with a lot of powdered sugar. And serve it with a gochujang mayo. A little bit of Korean influence in there, I like it. Take a look at that beauty. Just big, thick, crunchy pieces of batter on the outside that have been fried up nicely. Nothing left to do but to put it inside me. Oh my God. This is awesome. Pork is already kind of a sweet meat, so it doesn't hurt to add even more sugar. And it is so soft, tender, gelatinous almost. Gonna give that a little bit of a dip. Now, I'm curious, is it gochujang? Why is it orange? Gochujang mayo, it should be red. 
Yep, I taste it. There is a little bit of gochujang in there. This is really unique because, you know, living in Asia, it's easy to get pork belly everywhere. In the US, if you want pork belly, you can only find it in the form of bacon at a mainstream grocery store. But here, he's got his own meat guy. I need a meat guy. Maybe me and his meat guy could meet. I'm so tired, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Any state fair isn't complete without food on a stick. From three foot long corn dogs. What do you keep doing? At some point it's gonna go through me, Calvin. To the giant dilly dogs at the Minnesota State Fair. Uh oh, Wait, gravity is not helping me right now. I thought I'd seen it all. That was until I arrived at Extreme Carnival Eats. Yo, the roast of my beef, the mash to my potato. This doll takes Korea's wildest corn dog creations to the next level with over the top food options like this. The hot Cheeto cheese dog. A massive chunk of cheese on a stick is wrapped in batter, dragged in bread crumbs, then deep fried. After, it's coated in nacho cheese, then hot Cheeto powder. Finally, it's garnished with sriracha mayo. Yet the most eccentric dog you'll encounter here is dressed up like Joseph and the amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. My favorite cereal in the world would probably be Fruity Pebbles. Maybe after Golden Grahams and then Cocoa Pebble. It's top three. But you have a Fruity Pebbles Korean cheese dog. What's that about? Welcoming me here, Mary, the boss and visionary of Extreme Carnival Eats. It's basically a giant mozzarella stick dipped in our special batter rolled in tempura, and then we coat it after it's cooked in Fruity Pebble cereal. It's delicious. Well, let's find out for ourselves. What makes this a Korean dog? A couple things. One, it's filled with cheese. Two, the panko crust on the outside. It's a very Korean thing. I remember my first time I tried it in Korea. I lived there for eight years, and I thought, is there shake and bake on my corn dog? Because that's what it feels like. Let's pick it up. Oh man, nice structural integrity. It's not like too gooey. We got kind of a jam sauce. I wonder if we're gonna get a cheese pull out of this. Whoa, that's incredible. It's sweet and it's cheesy. The Fruity Pebbles are giving off that amazing artificial fruit essence. I like it. The jam sauce, that ties it all together. That makes it work. It's kind of like the sweet binding agent that brings all the elements together, like booze at a party. This lady has an insane menu. I wish I could just do a whole episode about her and how her brain works. The only thing that's not remarkable on her menu is a bucket of fries. No offense. It makes sense that you have it there for the people who want to order that, but you come here and you see all this and you order French fries? Don't hang out with people like that. If this cheesy fruity stick hasn't left you shocked and dismayed, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then our final food of the day most definitely will. Peanut butter, jelly, bacon, and of course the hot dog in there too. What do you think makes this combination work? But first, Mary has another quirky recipe hidden up her sleeve. Nashville hot chicken waffle sandwich. So it's chicken with Nashville hot sauce between two Belgium waffles. It's kind of a spin-off on chicken and waffles. The marriage of chicken and waffles initially served the needs of night owls, grappling with the choice between a late night dinner and an early breakfast, providing a delightful fusion of the two. You have the sweetness of the syrup along with the saltiness of the chicken. And you know, savory and sweet are you two taste you want to go for when you eat. It's like Bonnie and Clyde. Exactly. Boom, I'm in the kitchen with Mike. We're gonna see how he makes the Nashville hot chicken waffle. It all starts with the chicken. So right here we have what looks like chicken fingers and that's gonna hit the oil right now. Does this beep when it's done? Yep. Do you ever hear that beep in your nightmares? No. What makes chicken and waffles great is that the sweetness actually works really well with the fried chicken. Is this going to be sweet? Is it going to be hot? What am I looking at here? So the waffles aren't super sweet, just a little hint of sweetness. And the Nashville hot isn't too extremely hot. It's more of a medium Nashville hot sauce. Nashville medium. I like it. Sounds safe. Mary and her husband launched into their state fair journey over a decade ago, debuting with a pizza boot. Last year, they birthed Extreme Carnival Eats, transforming their wildest ideas into reality. Five minutes has gone by. Let's take out that chicken. <laughs> and it's time to dump it under the heat lamps. Now the chicken is ready. We got to get started with the waffle. Grab a waffle, fling it on the flat top, grab some chicken, place the chicken on the waffle. Some pickles next. This is the Nashville hot right here. Oh, and right here we have a sweet syrup going on. This is an amazing combination. Time to top it off. And that is complete. Right here we have our Nashville hot chicken waffle for $16.35. Now it doesn't really compress. Oh my gosh, can I even pick this up? Oh no. I gotta give the handleability about a three out of 10. I'm so sorry, Mary. Okay, I've got it now. It's dripping to the plate below. It's very inviting. I've heard of toasting up buns for a burger, but toasting up the waffle, that's nice. 
man, that is a, a delightful texture combination. Just like Mary said, it is savory and it's sweet. That chicken is so crunchy. And the waffle, I gotta say, putting the waffle on the flat top, that is key. This is like a pre-made Belgian waffle. If you get a waffle like this just from a bag, it's gonna be kind of dry. You gotta do stuff to it. To kind of toast it and soften it up at the same time. The only thing is that they should call this Nashville mild. Mary, I'm not hating. I love you and I love your zeal. It's not hot. But it's crunchy, it's savory, it's sweet, and it's delicious. Before I reach the weight limit for a forklift, that guy's gonna have to carry me out of here later. There's still room in my stomach for one more dog, a hot dog here at Starvin' Marvin's. Setting their food truck in motion in 2018, Melissa and her wife have been producing a distinctive assortment of gourmet hot dogs for the fortunate people of Washington. What makes a hot dog gourmet and not just a normal hot dog? So it's all about the quality of the meat, but then also the toppings, all sorts of fun toppings, things that you maybe wouldn't ever think to put on top of a hot dog. If you crave the ultimate comfort food, the Mac Daddy won't disappoint you. Stacking mac and cheese and bacon on a hot dog. For a bolder option, consider the Chicago dog, boasting pickle, tomato, mustard, onion, relish, celery salt, and hot peppers. It should be clear by now that the hot dog game at Starvin' Marvin is aiming to knock off your socks or any other type of footwear. What are the menu items that give people a double take, where people are like, wait, what is that? Peanut butter, jelly, and bacon every single time. It's peanut butter, jelly, bacon, and of course the hot dog in there too. Yep. How'd you come up with this? As the name suggests, the PB and J and B hot dog takes off with a massive peanut butter smear inside the hot dog bun. My wife and I were just sitting at home one day. I'm from upstate New York where like hot dogs are like a thing anywhere you go pretty much. Next, a hot dog rests in that cozy bed. And I like jelly on a lot of things. Followed by a sweet hit of jelly. I've never had peanut butter, jelly, and bacon, but we were just sitting there like, let's try it. And a hailstorm of bacon bits. So we put it together and we're like, this is a winner, the sweet salty it works man ladies and gentlemen this is my final bizarre state fair food because after this i'm gonna explode my stomach cannot take it anymore oh look this band is doing sound check oh uh, yeah let's pick it up let's test that structural integrity the bun seems nice and soft crunching it together i'm smushing it together i'm gonna spread that bacon out you can see that jelly sticking out this is awesome you know as somebody who grew up in a trailer house eating jiff and smuckers jelly this is close to my heart Dun, 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 dun. Mm. Oh, whoa. You gotta be careful. There's a thick streak of peanut butter in there. I got it. And my God, it is delicious. It's such a beauty. I mean, the bacon adds some crunch on top, sweet jelly, but you gotta be careful. That peanut butter will seal your trachea shut. Make sure you got plenty of saliva going beforehand. Sunny, pay for yourself. It's not a competition. I'm trying to figure out, does it taste like I spilled some peanut butter and jelly into my hot dog or I spilled a hot dog into my peanut butter and jelly? Because it's one or the other. I think it's more like a hot dog fell into my peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but I kept eating it anyway. How would that happen? Practically, I don't know. If you love Indian food, then you're gonna love our new channel, Best Ever Food India. Subscribe now for weekly videos, showcasing the most unique street food from around the country. Here they've slow cooked this pork. Here they've slow cooked this. Here they've. Uh, you gotta be body positive if you're eating food like this. Here's my question Am I allowed to make fat jokes? I used to weigh 300 pounds. Am I grandfathered in? I mean, I still got a belly. I just suck it in for 18 hours a day. My local fat guys, you know what it's like to suck in your stomach for 20 hours at a time? You get home and then you're like, ugh, I can let it go finally. What is that? Deep fried chicken. Hmm? Oh, there's a person. Okay, oh, okay. It's a deep fried pork belly. Um, yeah, it's good, it's worth it. Ladies and gentlemen, what a day. Today we set out to try this fair's most bizarre food offerings, and I think we were highly successful. They keep the menus very secret. We tried to find them online. We got here and they're like, no, presto changeo, it's something else. But that something else was real special. I gotta say, probably my favorite one today was the Fruity Pebble Cheese Korean Sick Dog. That may not be the official name, but that's what I'm calling it. So I wanna know for you guys, what was your favorite bizarre food combination? Otherwise, guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. That is it for this one. Puppy. All right, time to go on patrol. Great timing. I'll help out a little bit. I'll stay in the back. You're doing good work. <laughs>